and welcome to my second bass lesson video. A lot of people have asked me to talk about harmonics, so that's what I'm going to focus on today. Harmonics are really useful special resonance points on your fretboard that can be used uh, to tune, it can, they can be used to complement chord tones or just melodically. The clearest harmonics are on the 4th, 5th, 7th, 9th and 12th frets. Uh, but the difference between harmonics and actual fretted notes is that you don't press down, you just rest your finger. So take this one on the 5th fret position. Uh, you don't actually fret the note, because then you get a C. But if you just rest your finger over the string, so without pressing down at all, that's what gives you the harmonic tone. And to get really punchy and, and clear harmonics, you're going to want to use the bridge pickup on your bass because the closer you get to the bridge, the more mids pop out. Mid, mids means mid-range frequencies. And you can hear that for yourself by just taking your fretting hand off and just play from the neck all the way up to the bridge like this. You can hear the mid-range frequencies pop through more. Uh, Nolly from Periphery des describes it as, as throaty frequencies and uh, I think that's a really good way of putting it. Now alternatively, if your bass doesn't have a bridge pickup, say you're playing a P bass or something like that, uh, you can just turn up the low mids on your amp EQ and it'll have the same effect. So these harmonics are useful because they produce different intervals relative to the open string. So going in order of pitch, you've got an open G and then the 12th fret is an octave above, a perfect octave above. The seventh fret is a fifth above, but one octave higher than that, so. The fifth fret is two octaves above, so. So you've got your root, one octave, two octaves. Now I should mention at this point that the fourth fret and the ninth fret produce the same tone uh, and it is a major third two octaves above and this it applies on all of the strings this by the way I was just just showing you on the G now there are some less common ones uh, they're a little crazy these ones so the third fret is a fifth above but two octaves higher so you've got your, your one octave up fifth here and then You've got that one as well on the third fret. Then just past the third fret, you've got this one, which is a minor seventh. So if you take your G minor scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then there's these ones. Uh, there's there's one just before the second fret, on it, and then just past it. And what they are is a root, a, a minor second, and a major third, three octaves up which is madness. But it's good to know that they're there. <laughs> and I should mention that uh, past the 12th fret, the positions are then repeated again. I mean, you're not going to get the, 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 one, the mad ones at the 2nd fret back out here at your 14th fret. It's just not going to happen. Um, but 15th, uh, 17th, 19th, 21st, Again, it's not really, but some of them are there, and they're in the positions you would expect past the 12th fret, is my point. Artificial harmonics are similar, but the way you go about playing them is just a bit different. They're called artificial harmonics because they're not um, naturally found just on your neck without having to do something fancy to get them. And that fancy way of playing it is, okay, so you take your open string and your 12th frets here. If you're playing a C here, five frets up, your twelfth fret in relation to where you're now playing has also moved up five frets so it's here. And by doing a technique that I saw Steve Bailey do on a video many moons ago with Victor Wooten, it's called Bass Extremes, yes. So essentially his fretting finger is now a capo and his right hand has to do the two jobs that we were doing before. So you know how we were resting a finger on and plucking? Well, we've got this hand being a capo now. So we have to have a resting finger and a plucker on one hand. And the way you do that, or the way Steve does that, and it's the way I've copied, <laughs> is you rest your index finger over the harmonic position that you want. And then with any of your three fingers, you pluck the note. And the part that gets crazy 
is that um, every time you move your left hand's position, the right hand harmonic position has to move with it. And once you get your head around this dual movement thing, you realise there's a lot of uh, potential for melodic movement, there's lots of texture you can add with chords, they're a lot of fun, so I, I highly recommend you have a go. There is another way to play them as well that I'll get crucified for not mentioning. Jaco Pastorius, you might have heard of him, and the way he does it is rather than rest his finger on the harmonic position, he rests his thumb and plucks behind with his middle finger. And then there's that famous uh, weather report line. See, as you can probably tell, I'm not as comfortable with that, that style of it. So, that's just about all I've got to say on harmonics and artificial harmonics. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video then please subscribe for more. Uh, let me know that you want some more videos like this by leaving a like and a comment. And share if you really enjoyed it. And follow me on the internet things in the description below. But that's it and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.